Yo ho, Mina san, Sydney here. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. So today I am recording or editing and creating my very first watercolor tutorial. So you guys get to enjoy this unique situation. <laughs> so let's see here. The reference is the little carpenter bumblebee above the uh, piece of paper and I am using let's see here Canson XL watercolor paper and a zebra what is the full name of this pencil it's a mechanical pencil a zebra Z grip plus mechanical pencil and I believe it's 0.7 lead Okay, so what are we doing here? We are working on perfecting the angle of the head and getting it proportionate. So right now, that's what I'm doing. I'm having a bit of difficulty. It took the longest time to do out of anything in this piece was get the head right. Because the eyes are so large on this um, insect that it just... It was very difficult. But once I get it right, we will move on. See here, I'm trying to match like the angles and all. It's It was kind of difficult, but I think if I had used a bigger piece of paper, it would have been easier. It's just when things are really small, the slightest twitch of the line really changes things. Okay, so moving on. I know you can't fully see the palette. But we'll start with this. So I'm going in and wetting the paper. Then I'm creating a wash of what is essentially a lemony or cooler yellow and Payne's gray. And then right on the B itself, I am using lemon yellow. That's the bright yellow, or it's essentially lemon yellow. It's full, correct name is brilliant yellow, but it's, well, yeah, it's fairly similar to lemon yellow. The amber color on the wings is the brilliant yellow mixed with um, burnt sienna. For the, yes, that would be abdomen thorax. The end, we'll call it that. The end section of the bumblebee. And all the dark parts right now is just a light wash of um, Payne's gray mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna and a little, little bit of burnt umber. So, yeah, we'll go in and I go over the thorax or the, the end section of the bee with the yellow to add a brightness and luminosity to it when I, so that it shows through when I go over with other colors. And then I just kind of build this up in slow layers. I'm, what am I doing? I am using the wet on to dry technique mostly, except for when I would do the shadows and things like that. When I do most of the shadows, I do a wet on to wet technique. And the wet on to dry is the dry paper and then a watery wash of watercolor. And then the wet on to wet is wet paper and a watery wash of watercolor again. So right here you see I am adding a darker section to the shadows, which is just a watered down version of Payne's Gray, Burnt Sienna, and Burnt Umber mixture of that mixture. And you notice before I used a, like the amber color from the wings. So what I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to add dimension to the shadows and kind of add life to it so that the shadows don't just seem like this dull gray. And then right here, I am adding the darker section to the wings because the, um, I, I will call it the thickest part of the wing is darkest and it's kind of got a black outline to it. And then as it thins out, that line goes away, but the front section of the wing has that outline. So I wanted to make sure to differentiate that.
And something important in watercolors is creating like hard and soft lines. So soft lines would be like, or soft edges I should say, hard edges and soft edges. So it's very defined where the bee is outlined in its back and its legs and antennae I'm also trying to define. However, you see where I just wet the paper, how it's shiny. That part is more of a soft edge, kind of blended out. So that's also what I was trying to do with the wing. The front of the wing, or the thickest part, has a hard edge, but the back parts of the wings have softer edges. So I want to define it to help give it depth. See here, mixing blue with the Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber Burnt Sienna mixture to darken it and I'm outlining the back section of the B as well as going in and adding more details. So with the back section it is segmented so I wanted to try and achieve that look with the watercolor so you can kind of see the lines a little bit right here but I will go in later and define those better. So this is how I am defining them better. I am using ink. So I'm using a dip pen. This is like black sumi ink. And I'm using the speedball nib holder with a G nib. And right here I'm just outlining this section. I wanted it to look either like the V was on a napkin or it was a window. So something very important which you'll see in the corner, I am testing the nib out in my sketchbook before moving to the actual piece because I want to make sure it's working properly. So it wasn't and I had to adjust it. And then you'll see in a second, come on, I bring the sketchbook back on screen, there you go. And I test it out again to make sure it's working properly and it is. So from there I move on to outlining the little window or napkin, however you wish to see it. wanted to give this an illustration look at, and it also a sketch look to me. wanted this to look like both an illustration and a sketch. And then right here I'm adding a little bit more definition to the end part and also showing that it is segmented. What was a lot of fun was when it came to defining the wings and adding details to the wings. That was a lot of fun. We'll see that in a second. But something cool is because I didn't use just plain black and I used a mixture to make black, I can add ink and the ink shows up and defines the darker sections even better. So that is a cool tip. So use a mixture to make black, if, especially if you want to use ink. And right there I did some stippling to help define the head from the rest. And here I'm adding details to the wings, so this was a lot of fun. It just brings such life to the creature, I think. Well, you guys almost made it to the end. So I also outlined the shadows a little bit and kind of give it a little bit of definition. It's more for illustration purposes, not necessarily just plain watercolor. Um, it just, it adds more texture. And right here I am going in with some, what is it? It's not acrylic, it's gouache. So some gouache, some light gouache, and I'm using a small and stiff brush to go in and highlight the eyes so that they seem shiny and appear lifelike and then the end part of the bumblebee as well as the legs because the black sections in the bumblebee are relatively shiny. So I do that, add some details that way and then I go in and I wanted to define the edge of these, this uh, window, I'll call it, into the bees world. So I added some more, um,
Wow, you guys made it to the end. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative and at least somewhat helpful to you, helpful to you guys. Um, comment lighting if you watch till the end. Other than that, please stay tuned for more. Don't forget to subscribe. See ya!